Welcome to Daniel's Inferno. My name is Daniel. Thank you very much for joining me today. If you have a moment, please like, subscribe, share, join the conversation below. I'd love to hear from you. So today's video, we are going to be talking about co-founder of Pink Floyd, Roger Waters. For those of you who don't know, at the very least, Pink Floyd should sound familiar, but Pink Floyd is an extremely popular uh, rock music band from the 60s, uh, and Roger Waters was the co-founder, and uh, he has recently, in the last few weeks, said some comments that have helped people solidify, even though people already believed this, that he's an anti-Semite. Uh, but the solidification has happened of this belief because of comments he's made. I would like to show you a bit of history, however, and not just the comments of today. So as you can see on the screen, Roger Water addresses the Star of David controversy. The Pink Floyd singer bassist calls the rabbi's claims wild and bigoted. So what claims could those be? So Roger Waters has called for a boycott of Israel. Uh, he has also supported the boy boycott, divestment, and sanctions. Um, and he had a Facebook post titled An Open Letter from Roger Waters. And he was explaining a controversy from a concert he had in Belgium where he had a pig balloon uh, emblazoned with the Star of David. Now, to be fair to Pink Floyd, Pink Floyd at their concerts have often invoked the imagery of the pig, had uh, giant pig sculptures, statues, balloons, uh, pictures behind, you know, it's it's the icon, the iconography of it is is a very uh, heavily used thing by Pink Floyd. However, to emblazon the balloon with the Star of David is a bit inflammatory in my opinion. For those of you who don't know, in the Jewish faith, uh, they stay away from unkosher meats. Uh, the pig is one of them. And that seems like a direct jab towards uh, the Jewish faith, at least in my opinion. So the story gained traction was picked up by the Jewish new newspaper, the Algemeiner, and a, a rabbi who is the dean of Simon Weisenthal Center said that Waters is an open hater of Jews and urged the other artists to denounce his anti-Semitism and bigotry. Uh, Waters called the rabbi's words wild and bigoted with an entirely predictable resulting rant. Well, it may be predictable because it's true, at least in my opinion. I mean, you don't need to be innovative to say when someone's being extremely anti-Semitic or racist, because that's what anti-Semitism is. Um, unfortunately, in the last few years, there have been kind of uh, two coalescing factors that have kind of combined. Uh, one of them is the rise of anti-Semitic hate towards people of the Jewish faith. And the other is the belief that anti-Semitism is somehow different from racism or that uh, Jewish people are actually in a place of privilege and power. So that means that they cannot actually be a victim group. So these factors have coalesced and uh, the rise of anti-Semitism, I mean, we have here in Canada, Justin Trudeau, who supported that resolution by uh co-sponsored by North Korea and Zimbabwe. And I mean, it, it's scary. We, we need to call this stuff out. And so I good on good on Abraham Cooper for for calling it out. Apparently he criticizes Cooper's use of anti-Semitic, saying the ADL has ruled his work has no anti-Semitic intent. I'd like to point out that he, so he invokes the ADL right there. So we're going to stop, and I'd like to show you actually uh, something from the ADL. Uh, this was actually in 2013, uh, the same year as his concert. It ish issued an open letter to Waters, strongly criticizing his outrageous July 25th letter to the rock and roll community, which endorsed the... BDS movement and called on fellow musicians to join him in refusing to perform in Israel. 
ADL pointed out that Waters' views on Israel are colored by offensive and dangerous undercurrents of anti-Jewish sentiment. We're going to read a bit of that letter. Your recent statements about Israel and advocacy for BDS have garnered significant condemnation, with some going as far as to label you an anti-Semite. This is not the first time you have encountered such allegations. Over the past few years, and remember this is in 2013, you have incorporated Jewish imagery into your concert performances, painting a starter David on your famous floating pig alongside other symbols, including a dollar sign and the sickle and hammer. So I'd like to just stop quickly and say that the dollar sign reference that they're making here is uh, at a concert he had in 2010, I believe, where he had uh, Star of David shaped bombs being dropped and uh, money following the explosion or the trail of the bomb, I, I don't remember. But the point is, is that money and, and bombs, Star of David bombs, were, that was the message he was getting across. And that is actually another uh, ancient anti-Semitic trope, you know, that the Jewish people are these, these money-grubbing type of people. And that's really not the case. If there are people of, Jewish faith who happened to be successful. Uh, Occam's Razor states to me that is because they worked very hard. Occam's Razor obviously being that the most simplest explanation is probably the truth. So we took you at your word that he, because he assured his fans that you were in no way equating Jews with money or communism, and the communism thing is actually another uh, anti-Semitic trope that's uh, is used um, in World War II. Uh, Hitler would often invoke the idea of the Jewish people being these hidden communists, uh, you know, among their ranks. And you know, I'm not a fan of the idea of communism, and there is. Uh, a historical tie uh, between, maybe not even a historical tie, but there is uh, at least evidence to show that there were Jewish people that were part of the Communist Party. But I mean, there were people of all faiths that were part of the Communist Party. And I mean, you know, we take people at who they are right now. And it's one thing to want to invoke a debate. So if Roger Waters was trying to say something along the lines of, okay, I'm not a fan of how Israel treats Palestine or the people of Palestine. It's a complex issue. You know, uh, there's issues on both sides of it, and, which is my belief. Uh, it's, I've, I've often, I've been very firm about that. And I'm not afraid to say it because it's okay to criticize Israel because it's not anti-Semitic to level reasonable criticism at a nation state but it has to be criticism that you will level at other nation states as well um, if they were engaging in the same type of actions and again you need to also realize that it's a very complex issue it's not just a simple you know solution uh, we most people i've actually never met a person who doesn't agree with a two-state solution um, but again, that, that comes with its own set of troubles. Uh, Israel must be given its right to self-determination, which is often the main contention that is had, is that people are trying to deny Jewish people's rights and is, is, Israel's right to existence. So in recent months, however, your relentless attacks against Israel and calls for a boycott of the Jewish state have caused us to re-examine your attitudes toward Jews. In a letter to your colleagues in the rock and roll, you offered full-throated, unambiguous support for the BDS movement, writing that their goal is to bring international attention uh, to these Israeli policies of occupation of the West Bank and violations of international law and Palestinian human rights, and hopefully to help bring them to an end, and employing other musicians to join you in refusing to perform in Israel. Because somehow, obviously, depriving the people of Israel of entertainment it is obviously going to is going to impact the Israel-Palestine situation. Clearly, that that follows in my mind, guys. If you don't think that follows, you're insane. 
Important details are omitted from your letter, which is a classic propaganda technique. Why didn't you point out that one of the stated objectives of the BDS movement, promoting a complete right of return for all Palestinians classified as refugees and the creation of a binational state would result in the end of the Jewish character of the state of Israel and destroy Jewish national self-determination? Your writing also makes no mention of Palestinian terrorism, nor does it provide any context to the complex nature of the conflict. Hamas, a terrorist organization which continues to advocate for Israel's dis destruction, is entirely absent from your letter. Those are all things that, if he was trying to invoke a, a, some sort of discussion about this, he would be fair. And he's in a position where it's not okay for him to say, I didn't know. The same with these anti-Semitic tropes that he's using. It's it's not a defense for him to say, I didn't know. He's in a position where... Uh, and you know what? Maybe if it was a one-time mistake, then people would be much more willing to forgive and forget. But there's clearly um, a political agenda that he is following, and he is trying to endorse other musicians uh, to follow. And in my opinion, all it's doing is actually depriving people in Israel the right to entertainment, which I, do, I don't know how that's actually going to achieve some sort of long-lasting uh, goal, uh, how it's solution-oriented for the Israel-Palestine conflict. And I mean, I'd like to just mention lastly about this, that Hamas, the terrorist-affiliated organization, has a military wing and a political wing. And it does advocate for the destruction of Israel. It's within their charter. So I don't want anyone coming at me with any nonsense that that's not the case. And you know what? No nonsense either about the semantics of what a Semite is, because I've had that thrown at me a few times. When I'm saying anti-Semitism, I'm talking about hatred towards people of the Jewish faith, specifically because they are of the Jewish faith. That's a pretty clear definition. So that's the definition I'm working off of. And that's the one I'd like us all to work off of for the remainder of the video. So what exactly has gotten Roger Waters in trouble recently? Why, why am I doing this video? Why, you know, dredge up the past like this? You know, I don't, I'm not trying to cancel him. I'm, at least, that's not my intention. And I mean, he has such a platform that I don't think he'd ever get canceled. But I do think we'd need to call out hate where hate where it's happening. We need to call it wrong when we see it. And so what exactly was wrong? Well, Pink Floyd's Roger Waters blames Israelis for, for uh, George Floyd's death. The musician sat down for an interview with the pro-Hamas Shihab news agency. Uh, it's his right to sit down with whatever news agency he wants, quite clearly. Uh, I don't think anyone would would say otherwise. I mean, I personally wouldn't sit down with a pro-terrorist uh, news agency, but that's just that's just me. So, musician and anti-Israel activist claimed Saturday that Israelis invented the method police used to kill George Floyd. So he said in an interview that Floyd died in Minneapolis police custody last month because of a technique invented by the IDF. So I'd actually like you guys to hear his comments directly. Um, I have just a two minute clip of the things that he was saying, uh, the outrageous things that to me sounds like he's trying to invoke things. Uh, he's trying to be very emotional, not factual in his interview here. And I mean, that's one way about it, obviously because it's a very emotional time. But for him to make this wild uh, claim that the IDF invented invented the method that uh, the police used on George Floyd, that that one man, Derek Chauvin, I mean, how many police officers came out and said that that's not a police technique? But this meth, you know, the knee on the neck, he claims the IDF invented it. So I'd like you guys to listen to this uh, we're only going to listen to about a minute and a half, two minutes, not the whole two minutes and 20 seconds. But there's some things in here directly that I think are very important to hear um, and why it spurred me to make this video at least.
Sheldon Adelson, who is the puppet master pulling the strings of Donald Trump, Mike Pompeo, mm -hmm. and what's his name? Free, uh, what's his name? The ambassador. Anyway, mm -hmm. Greenberg, I mm -hmm. think is his name. Greenberg. Sheldon Adelson is the puppet master pulling all of the strings. And yeah, Sheldon right, yeah. Adelson is a right wing fascist, racist bigot who doesn't understand the first thing about the idea that human beings might have rights. Sheldon Allison believes that only Jews, only Jewish people, are completely human, that they're attached in some way. The chosen to, people of God, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and every, everybody else on earth is there to serve them. Mm -hmm. He's crazy. This is a crazy, crazy, crazy guy. Unfortunately, this crazy, crazy, crazy guy is also incredibly rich and has the tiny little, I nearly said the P word, mm -hmm. that can also be used to describe a male gentleman, prick, mm -hmm. Donald Trump, in his pocket. The murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis last week was done with a technique invented by the IDF by mm -hmm. the occupation forces. Mm -hmm. Israeli, the Israelis invented, let's kill people by kneeling on their necks and cutting off the blood supply of the carotid artery to the mm -hmm. brain. That is an Israeli technique taught to the militarized police forces of the United States of America by Israeli experts, who mm -hmm. the Americans have been flying over to the United States mm -hmm. to teach them how to murder the blacks because they've seen how efficient the Israelis have been murdering Palestinians mm -hmm. in the occupied territories using those techniques and they're proud of it they're proud of it the last thing that I want you to see the Israelis are proud of it firstly do you have any sort of evidence at all that that can back up this claim that the IDF invented this technique secondly uh, for it to be a technique that was taught to the militarized police forces, that would have to mean that it is a widespread or widely used. And, I mean, there are instances where it has been used, yes, but I won't say that it's a widespread phenomena. I'm more of a man of evidence than I am a man of emotion. Not that I don't get emotional, quite clearly. I mean, when you saw the video of what happened to George Floyd, I mean, you'd have to be a heartless individual, a sociopath, devoid of emotion, to not to not feel just horrific for that man, for his family. Regardless of what he may have been doing, regardless of his past, anything, it does not matter. What happened to him was horrific. He was denied his day in court in front of the judge or jury. And that's wrong. That's wrong. And I mean, I, I don't, I actually haven't seen people say that it isn't wrong because it's not a controversial thing to, to chant BLM, Black Lives Matter. That's not controversial, but that's why they're doing it. I mean, it's like, this is obviously a very silly example, but it's an example nonetheless. You know, it's like if someone was chanting on the street, don't kill cats. Well, clearly, clearly don't just go around killing, you know, little kittens, little cats. Don't do that. That's, that's horrific. People don't do that. For Roger Waters to make these claims, for me, it really invoked and reminded me of what a minister of Hitler's would be saying, uh, propagandizing uh, the people of the Jewish religion. And for him to have this type of a platform and to be throwing out these anti-Semitic tropes, as I said earlier, firstly, it's not all right for him to just say, I didn't know. And I realize in the clip he is referring, for the most part, uh, to Sheldon Adelson. For those of you who don't know, he is a casino mogul. He is a Republican donor. But that means he must be a puppet master. And that idea of a puppet master is, is a trope as well. That's also an anti-Semitic trope. And I mean, it, it's not all right for a man of his stature, a man of his platform, to be throwing uh, this type of nonsense out. And lastly, I, 
I have someone in my family who's quite knowledgeable when it comes to musical history, musical theory, um, you know, uh, the bands of the 60s and 70s, you know, the rock and roll history. And uh, he told me, and I believe him, that the other co-founder of Pink Floyd and other members of Pink Floyd did not want Roger Waters solo stuff on their site because he keeps getting himself into these situations where he's throwing out anti-Semitism left, right, and center. And I don't agree with that. I don't. And I mean, again, we need to call out hate, whatever type of hate it is. And it's risible to me that people are somehow trying to vitiate Jewish people as if they're, at, you know, they're, they're, they can't be a victim. You know, they're, they're in too much of a place of power or they're not low enough on the victim totem pole to actually be recognized. You know, again, anti-Semitism is on the rise. I think it's actually the most frequent type of uh, racism or targeted hatred that is that is seen. And I mean, you know, I, I'm... I know, and my family knows, quite a few Jewish people, all lovely, they can believe anything. I, you know, I don't care if someone believes that there's a flying spaghetti monster up in the sky. I don't. What matters is the person in front of me, how they're acting, the things they're saying to me. If, if I wish to know, if we're having a, some sort of philosophical debate about religion, that's one thing. It's the same way that you don't like Jehovah's Witnesses coming to your door and not leaving when you say, I'm not interested, because they're being pushy. No one likes a pushy person, regardless of what they're trying to push, whether it's a salesman or if it's, you know, a religious salesman. And to just to hate a person just because they have a different belief than you, regardless of if it's a religious belief or a political disagreement, it's it's wrong. You should hate. You should only hate based off the measure of a person's character, based off of how the, the actions that they're taking and have taken. You know, people can change, and uh, the nicest people can become the evilest killers, and the evilest killers can turn around and become you know church-going saints. Humans are capable of many things. That that's clear. Roger Waters is making claims about the Jewish faith to try to invoke hatred towards them. Why else would he try to co-opt the horrific death of George Floyd for his political agenda? I mean, he had to come out and apologize because he doesn't have evidence of this, because there is no evidence of this, because it's nonsense. And I'd lastly like to show you... Um, there have been repercussions, and there there need to be repercussions for things that happen. And again, I'm not saying cancel. I'm saying that you know actions have consequences. As you see, the MLB Major League Baseball drops a joint promotion with Roger Waters over anti anti-Semitism charges. And I mean, it's how the mighty have fallen. Seven years ago, he was he was quoting how the ADL have have said he's not an anti-Semite, and then later that year. They openly say he's an anti-Semite. And I mean, his actions say to me that he has some sort of conspiratorial anti-Semitism. Uh, you can't even call it an undercurrent. It's like an overcurrent. It's, it's, it's just spewing out of his mouth so blatantly. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Am I wrong to label him an anti-Semite? Um, is, is this all just to create some sort of discussion, you know? And if it is, why is he going to such emotionally charged lengths to try to get that discussion going when rational people come to the table and have a discussion? I mean, that's the point of this YouTube channel, is to have discussions, is, is so people can reach understandings and we can be less emotional, more logical. You know, the, the Socratic method, we all know what that is. And it is it is so far the best way to deal with disagreements. Again, let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm Daniel's Inferno. Thanks for watching.